In Cusco, the walls of Saksai Huaman remain an unsolved riddle, gigantic stones with interlocking faces so precise that no mortar holds them, only superstitions and theories. For years, legends spoke of melted rock, lost technology, or impossible skill, while the official story credited relentless Inca hands alone. But in 2012, a sudden pattern of cracks forced the Peruvian Ministry of Culture to launch an urgent scientific investigation, uncovering clues hidden beneath centuries of mystery and erosion. Now, with newly revealed lab results and seismic concerns shaping a modern battle to preserve these walls, the question is no longer just how they were built, but whether we can finally prove or disprove the secrets behind their construction. The real story may demand a total rethink. Three rival explanations stand at the heart of Saksai Huaman's engineering riddle, each carrying its own set of predictions and material fingerprints. The first, often called the cast stone or geopolymer hypothesis, imagines a lost science at work. Builders dissolving limestone with plant acids or mixing a slurry of ground rock, clay, and water to pour into molds. Proponents point to the occasional presence of hard outer shells, microcrystalline interiors, and a handful of blocks with what look like aggregate textures. If this model is correct, the evidence should be unmistakable. Residues of ash or fuel, traces of organic binders, or chemical signatures distinct from local bedrock. Large-scale casting would also leave behind production debris, kiln fragments, waste pits, or telltale layers of artificial binder visible under a microscope. The second theory leans not on chemistry, but on vanished technology. Here, the razor-thin seams and complex stone faces are seen as the work of advanced cutting tools, perhaps tipped with diamond or made from alloys unknown to Inca metallurgy. This idea finds support in the geometric precision of the joints, the smoothness of the surfaces, and the occasional presence of unexplained marks or motifs. Yet for this to hold, there should be clear traces, fragments of tools harder than copper, or at least consistent wear patterns and microabrasions that cannot be explained by hammer stones or simple abrasives. Archaeologists have searched for these artifacts, sifting through spoil heaps and soil layers, but so far, nothing has surfaced to confirm the use of such materials. The third model, grounded in fieldwork and oral tradition, credits the walls to relentless hand labor and an intimate knowledge of stone. According to this view, blocks were quarried from nearby outcrops, shaped with hammer stones and copper chisels, and fitted by repeated trial, rubbing, marking, and adjusting until each face locked perfectly against its neighbors. This approach leaves its own distinctive traces, tool marks, copper residues, and a petrographic match between wall stones and local geology. Modern stonemasons in Cusco, working with the same materials and tools, have demonstrated that such precision is possible, though painstaking. The process would not produce ash beds or artificial binders, but it would explain the presence of nubs and scoop marks used for maneuvering and aligning the stones. Each hypothesis predicts a different archaeological record. Cast stones should reveal binders and production waste. Lost technology requires exotic tool fragments or microware signatures. Orthodox quarrying leaves behind the scars of labor, the evidence of local stone, and the fingerprints of human persistence. The challenge is to match these expectations against the physical record, using thin section microscopy, geochemical assays, and direct observation to see which story the walls themselves are willing to tell. Cracks began to snake across the great limestone faces in the southern bastion of Saksai Huaman. By October 2012, engineers from the Ministry of Culture stood in front of widening gaps, their measuring tapes pressed into fissures that had not existed the year before. The ground beneath the walls had started to shift, subsidence, driven by hidden currents of groundwater and the relentless force of seasonal rain. Along the base, a subtle but unmistakable recession had set in, pulling some stones out of alignment and threatening the very geometry that had survived centuries of earthquakes and conquest. The urgency was unmistakable. Within 48 hours, the Ministry's Heritage Office convened an emergency session, issuing a red tag for the most vulnerable sector. Two mandates were handed down. First, to halt further movement before the next rainy season. Second, to launch a full scientific diagnosis of the damage. 
The fate of the walls would now rest on more than tradition or intuition. Conservation had become a race against time. Dr. Jesus Galvez, a geologist and petrographer known for his blunt assessments, was called to lead the technical response. His charge was clear. Identify what was happening beneath the surface and determine if the stones themselves were at risk of irreversible loss. Dr. Elena Yatsenko, a Ukrainian expert in microstructure analysis, joined the team, bringing experience from similar crises at other World Heritage sites. Together, they pressed for laboratory analysis, not only to guide emergency repairs, but to settle, once and for all, whether the walls contained traces of ancient casting or were the product of relentless hand labor. The government's rapid approval gave the team an unusual degree of freedom. Diagnostic trenches were authorized and samples from both wall and quarry were cleared for export to partner labs. Engineers installed moisture probes and began mapping the subsidence, while heritage staff negotiated with local guides and residents whose livelihoods depended on uninterrupted access to the park. The sense of responsibility was palpable. Any misstep could mean the loss of an irreplaceable monument, or worse, the collapse of a national symbol. In the days that followed, the site transformed into a field laboratory. Dr. Galvez's team charted the crack patterns, traced water infiltration routes, and documented each area of wall recession. Every measurement and sample would serve a dual purpose, to inform immediate stabilization and to build the evidence base needed to test the competing theories about the wall's origins. The crisis had forced a scientific reckoning, one that would draw on international expertise and set the stage for a new era of conservation at Sacsayhuaman. The field teams arrived in Cusco with a mandate that left little room for error. Diagnostic trenches traced the base of the southern bastion, their edges lined with plastic to keep modern contaminants at bay. Petrographic samples, chipped from both wall and quarry, were sealed in numbered bags and logged for export. Engineers from Peru's Ministry of Culture worked alongside Russian and Ukrainian specialists, each bringing their own instruments and protocols. Every detail mattered – sample orientation, depth, even the humidity of the air at collection. In the laboratory, thin section slides revealed the story locked in stone. Quarry samples showed fossiliferous limestone, dense with ancient marine shells and microfossils, clear evidence of a local geological source. Wall specimens, by contrast, told a subtler tale. Most were dominated by microcrystalline calcite, with crystal sizes ranging from 1 to 10 microns. This fine-grained texture, known as micrate, appeared homogeneous under polarized light with only the occasional calcite vein threading through the matrix. The chemical signature, measured by X-ray diffraction and scanning electron microscopy, matched the quarry limestone almost exactly. No traces of exotic binders, ash, or industrial residues were found. The distinction between so-called Type A and Type B blocks became a focal point. Type A stones, mainly at the wall's base, sometimes displayed a denser outer shell over a slightly coarser core. Early interpretations hinted at artificial agglomeration, a shell cast over fill material. Yet the shell's boundary was gradual, not sharp. Natural mineral veins cut through both shell and core, undermining the idea of separate casting phases. Type B blocks, forming the upper courses, were uniformly microcrystalline throughout, indistinguishable from unworked outcrops on the hill. Surface analysis uncovered copper traces and the faint scars of abrasion, marks left by hammerstones and chisels, not by molds or chemical softening. The so-called bell ringing sound, often cited as a clue to casting, was explained by the density and purity of the limestone, a property shared by both wall and quarry samples. No ash beds, kiln fragments, or layers of organic binder turned up in the debris or microstructure. The evidence, at least in the samples examined, pointed to hand shaping and fitting, not large-scale casting. Meanwhile, ground-penetrating radar swept the base and flanks of the bastion. The GS-8000 system, deployed in 2024, mapped the foundations in three dimensions, probing for voids, moisture, and fractures. High-resolution scans revealed moisture pockets and subsurface fissures, some aligned with known water infiltration routes. These data, vital for risk management, 
also provided a cross-check against casting claims. No concrete voids, no evidence of poured fill, only the dense, continuous mass of quarried limestone. Moisture migration maps guided conservation teams to the most vulnerable sectors, shaping the next phase of drainage and stabilization. The multinational analysis produced a dataset as complex as the walls themselves. Petrographic slides, geochemical profiles, and GPR models filled the case files. Each result narrowed the field of possibilities. The stones of Sacsayhuaman were not silent. Under the lens and the radar pulse, they yielded a record of their making. One measured in microns and millennia, not in myth. Thin section slides, viewed under polarized light, reveal a world of detail invisible to the naked eye. In the laboratory, Dr. Galvez moves methodically from one sample to the next, searching for the signatures that would betray artificial origins. If the walls of Sacsayhuaman had truly been cast from a slurry or softened by secret chemistry, the evidence would be unmistakable. Ghosts of ash, flecks of organic binder, or the telltale layering of poured concrete. Yet, sample after sample returns the same verdict. The limestone is dense, microcrystalline, and nearly identical to the raw blocks still exposed on the hillside above the fortress. Natural mineral veins cut through both the so-called shell and core of the basal stones, threading across boundaries that would have been sharp if poured in separate phases. Under the microscope, these veins show no sign of artificial interruption. No trapped residue, no abrupt change in crystal size. The transition from shell to core is gradual, not the abrupt interface that marks a deliberate casting process. Where proponents of the cast stone model expect to find industrial debris, the slides remain clean. No kiln fragments, no podzolanic ash, no foreign inclusions. The absence is as telling as any positive result. Surface analysis adds another layer to the picture. Copper traces cling to the edges of worked joints, and the faint scars of abrasion run along the faces of the blocks. These marks are not the product of molds or chemical softening, but of repeated contact with hammerstones and chisels. The so-called bell-like ring, sometimes cited as proof of artificial stone, is explained by the density and purity of the microcrystalline limestone, a property shared by both wall and quarry samples. Even the occasional hard shell on basal blocks, once seized upon as evidence of hydraulic lime, proves under scrutiny to be a natural product of recrystallization and weathering not a man-made veneer. The search for residues extends beyond the walls themselves. Engineers sift through the debris at the base of the bastion, probing for ash beds, kiln waste, or layers of charcoal, anything that might hint at large-scale production. The soil is silent. There is no sign of the infrastructure that would support an industrial-scale casting operation. No production pits, no mounds of spent fuel, no scatter of slag or lime nodules. The archaeological record, as it stands, does not support the story of lost chemistry or vanished kilns. Dr. Galvez, never one for speculation, sums up the evidence with characteristic directness. If a cast stone industry existed here, it left no trace, not in the stone, not in the soil, not in the chemistry. What remains, instead, is a record of labor, copper stains, abrasion grooves, and a geological match between wall and hill. The stones of Saksai Huaman speak not of lost formulas, but of relentless handwork and the patient shaping of local rock. The mystery endures, but the evidence narrows the field. The walls were not poured. They were carved, fitted, and set by human hands, one block, one joint at a time. Ministry engineers, facing the reality of Saksai Huaman's vulnerabilities, translated laboratory findings into a new conservation blueprint. The 2024 to 2030 Master Plan, now official policy, prioritizes drainage upgrades across the park's perimeter, redirecting runoff away from the foundations and installing moisture sensors in high-risk sectors. These interventions are not cosmetic. Moisture migration maps, informed by ground-penetrating radar, pinpoint subsurface fissures and pockets of groundwater that once escaped notice. Targeted trenches and permeable backfill now interrupt these flows, slowing the advance of erosion beneath the walls. Seismic modeling, completed in 2024 using finite element analysis, has reshaped emergency protocols. The models confirm that the wall's zigzag geometry and inward-sloping batter angles 
help redirect earthquake energy, reducing the risk of catastrophic collapse. Engineers have used these insights to prioritize shoring at critical junctions and to stage evacuation routes for both workers and visitors. Visitor caps, once a point of contention with local guides, are now enforced during heavy rains and after seismic warnings, balancing economic needs with the realities of structural risk. Every intervention, from surface coatings to drainage ditches, is rooted in the evidence gathered since the 2012 crisis. The fortress stands as both monument and laboratory, its ongoing preservation shaped by the interplay of ancient engineering and modern science. Even as conservation teams reinforce the ancient bastions and seismic models clarify how the walls hold firm, a core of unanswered questions continues to animate debate. The function of the nubs and scoop marks, those enigmatic protrusions and hollows left on so many blocks, remains as elusive as ever. Some masons call them the fingerprints of construction, others see only the residue of lost rituals or unfinished work. The purpose of the serpentine motifs and incised signs, too, stirs speculation. Are they builders' marks, spiritual symbols, or something more technical? Surface chemistry offers hints but not closure. While the idea of full-scale stone softening now stands on shaky ground, the possibility that plant-based acids or mineral slurries played a role in final polishing or fit cannot be ruled out. No clear chemical residue has yet been isolated, but the search continues. One more thin section, one more microprobe at a time. Beneath the ground, the story grows even more opaque. In 2025, remote sensing teams reported a series of subsurface anomalies, linear voids and low-density zones, interpreted by some as possible chinkana or tunnels. Yet, official excavation permits remain pending and the Ministry of Culture has kept precise coordinates and raw GPR data under wraps. For now, these features exist only as signals on a screen, their true nature unconfirmed. Independent geophysicists and local stakeholders alike call for open datasets and minimally invasive boreholes to settle the matter. The path forward is clear, if not easy. Broader sampling, transparent publication, and peer-reviewed ground-truthing will be required to move from rumor and anomaly to established fact. Until then, the walls of Saksaihuaman continue to guard their secrets, inviting each new generation of researchers to test what is known against what remains unknown. In 2012, urgent cracks and water damage at Saksaihuaman triggered a multinational scientific investigation, leading to over 200 petrographic samples analyzed and multiple GPR surveys through 2024. Lab results show the wall stones are made from local limestone, with microcrystalline calcite matching nearby quarries, and reveal tool marks and copper traces, evidence supporting skilled hand shaping over large scale casting. However, unresolved questions remain. The purpose of stone nubs and incised motifs, the full extent of possible tunnels, and whether limited chemical smoothing played any role. The Ministry of Culture's 2024-2030 Master Plan now prioritizes drainage and seismic risk reduction, directly linking past findings to present action. As new mapping and remote sensing projects continue, the walls of Saksaihuaman remain both a feat of engineering and an open scientific challenge. For now, the evidence points to extraordinary manual craftsmanship, while the search for answers continues, stone by stone.